What's crack, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG, big dogs. Got to eat. Congrats uh, to anyone watching this video. Not because you're watching this video, but because you're probably in your fantasy football semifinals. And this is a very important week on the waiver wire because the story of the week is that of uh, more injuries to running backs. So it's kind of the story of every single week. We're going to run through our favorite waiver wire pickups. Who we're dropping the number one waiver wire claim on. How much fab we're dropping on these running backs. Some wide receivers as well. And what we're doing with them. All right. Monday Night Football is on right now. Actually, it's the Cleveland LV game. After this, we have Chicago-Minnesota. So I'm filming this before the Chicago-Minnesota game. There's also the two games tomorrow, Seattle, Seattle, Philly, whatever, all that kind of nonsense. So some of this stuff might be outdated. Some of this shit might not matter. Some new players might end up getting onto this list depending on different injuries, et cetera, whatever, uh, after these games. I apologize. I keep looking over there because we are... Witnessing a terrible fucking game, so I should stop looking that way altogether. I'm ready to roll. So, without any further ado, don't tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. Now let's see. As always, we have our exclusive waiver wire fab guidance article up on the site if you want to become a big dog member bdge.store forward slash community get them nick mullins kill them oh only fucking thing you're killing is the people on the sidelines those harrod throws okay we have our chart up on the websites okay where it ranks every player it ranks them in terms of their waiver wire rank where you would pick them up relative to the other players of their position relative to everybody on the list now i have antonio brown as the number one player this week I realize that he's not going to be available in most leagues, but on the off chance that someone had dropped him last week because they're like, ah, we don't think he's going to make it back or the team's not going to welcome him bike. That is when you pounce on him because Antonio Brown right now is set up to be Tom Brady number one target because both Chris Godwin, who is out for a long time, he's got the torn ACL. Mike Evans dealing with a hamstring injury who uh, they said is actually possibly suiting up next week. I would err on the side of caution and say that it's probably not going to happen. But you take away Godwin, Evans, and Leonard Fournette. And at this point in the season, those are his three probably top pass catchers in terms of targets. Don't really have the numbers. Maybe Gronk is there over Fournette, but maybe not. But you you rip out those three guys and you leave Antonio Brown there. So he's my number one waiver wire guy. They get Carolina and then the New York Jets over the next two weeks, which means he has a great matchup. And the guy behind him on this list, the number two ranked running back, but more likely number one overall player to pick up this week of the guys that are likely available on your waiver wire is Mr. Ronald McDonald Jones. Leonard Fournette is going to be out one to two weeks, likely the remainder of your fantasy playoffs. And again, they get Carolina and the New York Jets. This is Ronald Jones's backfield. Gio Bernard is also out. Keyshawn Vaughn is Keyshawn Vaughn, which means Ronald Jones is going to be a 20 touchback behind a great offensive line and behind a pretty great quarterback. All right. We've seen what Leonard Fournette has done. Bruce Arians came out and said, this is his backfield. We expect Ronald Jones to do what Leonard Fournette did for us down the stretch last year. If I can remind you, I would, but I can't because I don't remember the numbers, but I remember it being, I'm just kidding. I'm going to pull it up for y'all. Eh, regardless, it's Ronald Jones's fucking backfield. And that's going to mean big things, especially if he's the guy in week 17 in your fantasy championship when they're playing against the New York Jets. So you drop whatever you have left on Mr. Ronald Jones to make sure he is in your lineup. Even if you don't need him, get him so that your opponents aren't the ones that got him. All right. Behind Ronald Jones, we have a bunch of situations that are tough to get a read on. But regardless, you're putting in claims for Duke Johnson, Craig Reynolds, Justin Jackson, Samaji P. Ryan, Devin Singletary. Those guys are like the next five ranked guys on my list and probably all in the same tier. Duke Johnson absolutely explodes on Sunday, goes like 22 for 107, catches a pass as well, set career highs across the board, gets into the end zone twice. This was with Miles Gaskin and Salvin Ahmed on the COVID list, ended up getting off the COVID list for this game, but playing minimal snaps. Uh, Miles Gaskin did get 10 carries for 54 yards, but was wildly uninvolved compared to Duke Johnson. You have to ask yourself, given that performance, that was the best performance by a running back by a Miami running back all season, came against the New York Jets. What happens here? Problem I have this is I, I still think it's going to be some sort of a committee. I don't think Duke Johnson takes that workhorse role. And even if he does, they got to they got to play against the Saints. They got to play against Tennessee the week after that. So two very, very tough run defenses. Maybe this is a situation where I'm just thinking about this too hard. And Duke Johnson just went out there and balled. And now he's going to be the guy and he's going to continue balling, which is why he's number three on this list. I think he deserves it after that, after that performance. But I'd still be cautious. Like you're still going to be a little bit cautious about Duke Johnson because there are red flags there. Craig Reynolds, y'all know I love this motherfucker. DeAndre Swift, 
might be back at practice this week. Jamal Williams already returning from the COVID list. They said they activated him off the COVID list, so he's probably playing next week. I still think this is probably Craig Reynolds' backfield unless DeAndre Swift is back. If DeAndre Swift is not back, I think Craig Reynolds leads his backfield. They play Atlanta and they play Seattle, too. Great matchups for running backs. Craig Reynolds got 26 carries in this game, all right? He went over 100 total yards from scrimmage, 26 carries. Godwin Ogabunum lost the fumble. He's getting relegated to the fucking back wherever he came from. Craig Reynolds is the guy in Detroit, man, and he looks really fucking good, and now he gets to do it against teams that are not really good. So I like Craig Reynolds a lot, man, personally. Justin Jackson's right under him on this list. He makes a list because Austin Eckler just got put on the COVID list. Austin Eckler, definitely, we don't need to argue about it. Austin Eckler's ass is vaccinated, 1,000% positive. Don't know that for a fact, but I know it for a fact. He can very much come back. I don't really even understand the new rules anymore. I'm just uh, of the mindset that, like, basically anyone who's vaccinated can come back, like, if they want to. That's really, like, how it's working in my brain now. They just straight up just changed the rules last week so that everybody can play again. So, Chargers playing Sunday. I would say there's a decent chance that Eckler gets back, but if he doesn't, it's Justin Jackson's backfield because he was the one who came in when Eckler was a little bit banged up last week, or he came into the game less than 100%, so they split carries. He actually outcarried Austin Eckler. He's a better pass catcher than Josh Kelly. Not a very fucking high bar right there, but they play Houston this week, all right? And Justin Jackson is the guy in the backfield there, man. He's going to have a very, very, very good game, man. I don't think that means Joshua Kelly can't be picked up either, because it's probably a lot of carries to go around in the backfield, and Josh, Cal uh, Josh Kelly might as well probably end up with a goal line carry as well. Uh, but Justin Jackson would be my number four guy. Samaji P. Ryan for Cincinnati. Joe Mixon things a little weird. Injures the ankle. Looks a little bit serious. But supposedly he was back on the field for the last snap of the game when they just kneeled it. So I, I don't know. It, it, if he was seriously injured, I don't think he would be back out there. Maybe he just felt like he fucking earned that way. Which you didn't, Joe. You didn't help them fucking win the game whatsoever. So you shouldn't have earned that fucking kneel down. But regardless, he has an ankle sprain. More likely day to day than anything serious or long term. But it's possible that they sit him. Samaji P. Ryan would be the next guy up. He's shown fucking pass catching prowess in this backfield they play baltimore that's a tough run defense though so i'm not like super high on p ryan and mixon's injury is not that serious so i'm not gonna go nutty about mr p ryan uh devin singletary we all knew what he did against the panthers this weekend 22 carries 86 yards first time like someone's getting a real workload here they're giving zach moss healthy scratches they are not giving the ball to Matt Breda. So he's the guy in the backfield, but that has never really worked out for any Buffalo running back, no matter you know who it is or how many carries they get. It's not something that stays consistent. So they play New England. I'm not excited to get him into my lineup immediately, but if he gets the usage again, then you can use him in week 17 against Atlanta, all right? And some of the wide receivers that we still lurve up in this bench. I'm on Rice and Brown, obviously. He should not really be unowned in your league, but if he is, then... Uh, he's a very, very much priority pickup. He gets Atlanta and then Seattle. He's basically Hunter Renfro in a Detroit uniform, which makes him hideous. But he's putting up basically the same numbers, man. 11, 11 targets, 10 targets, 11 targets. It's just like game after game after game with TJ Hawkinson out. They need players over the middle of the field to get those targets, and it's been him. Uh, Brashad Perriman, I really, really like with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans and Leonard Fournette out, so I think he becomes like their wide receiver too behind Antonio Brown. Gabriel Davis also should not be unknown. He will blast it off this week, 75 yards, two touchdown catches with Emmanuel Sanders out. I think that will continue to be the case there. And that's really it for high profile guys if you want to see the rest of the list you can catch that again bdge.store forward slash community if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the thumbs up button make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new let me know what video you want to see for tomorrow tomorrow this point in the season you know i don't want to do next year's drafts i can't do any trade target stuff let me know what videos you want to see in the middle of the week for the next two weeks maybe i can do streaming defenses for this week and next week or players to pick up before the weekend like we probably would have hit Ronald Jones and Craig Reynolds this week if we did that. But that's it, man. So I'm out of here. Good luck on the waiver wire. Good luck in tonight's game. If you still got people balling out, rolling out, playing out, whatever, whatever. Fuck one chains. Love.